I, I would say dignity is about people having autonomy, real choices in their lives, you know, and collective autonomy, not an individualistic kind of sense of autonomy. Um, I also believe dignity is really connected to um, social justice and direct action activist practices of witnessing. I mean a witnessing that says, I, you know, when, uh, you know, I just remember interviewing a woman of color who was queer, who was really struggling in a workplace we were in together, and when she said to me, like, you get me, you get me, and I was like, that's dignity, that's me mm. doing dignity to her, really witnessing who she is, yeah. and then as an activist, the duty of the witness is not, it's not enough to hear this person. I have to create a social response that actually takes on the structures of oppression that are disappearing this person. Right. So like we actually have a, we have an ethical obligation to move to more than make space for this person and wit witness them personally, yeah. but to structurally change things so that there's more space for them. For me, it's really tied up with that ethic of belonging. Mm -hmm. That like when we were talking uh, this morning, there was a lovely presentation from Aaron Monroe and Maria Townsend around their work with youth who are gender variant, queer, two-spirit. And, um, and trans. And um, you know, one of the things that they were talking about, I thought um, was so beautiful was this, um, you know, uh, an ethic of belonging that um, we're required to belong our children. Mm -hmm. And that the forces of hate in this particular, in the specificity of that conversation, homophobia and transphobia, yeah. have taught parents to hate their own children. Yes, yeah. it's, it's really amazing how that works. That's not a that's not a simple social interaction. There's a pattern there. It's profound, and yeah. it and that's connected to dignity for me as well. It's like this ethic of belonging. My father has great teachings on dignity. My father, Bill Reynolds, has been a huge teacher of mine. My mother has taught me strength. But my father, um, I taught one of the things he said about stop and fights between men um, was that you always have to give a guy an out, mm -hmm. and and in conversation it means you have to let someone have their dignity so that they can walk away without violence, without having to stand up for themselves because they're such oppressed folks, you know? So that those teachings have always been strong with me. My father's actions to, to safeguard the dignity of our family, the collective family, you know, he collects people together. And mm -hmm. uh, so I think that I can't really articulate that, but I think that's culture about him being Irish Catholic. Yeah. You know, my mom's a Newfie and I think there's something cultural about the dignity of that. She's a rock, she's a worker. There's a dignity of being a working class person that's for me, all those things, I can't, um, those things are, none of them are mutually exclusive. They're all the threads of the fabric of dignity. So it comes yeah. to me from culture, from family, you know, from social justice yeah. activism. Dignity has to be at the center of the work. And so, for example, in the work that I do with men who've been violent in relationship, um, or anyone, uh, mm. woman or gender variant person, it, like what is, um, I just think of the person who was, the vic who was victimized by that violence, they have to be at the center. So that will keep me with dignity. You know, there's all these practice we can have if we center ethics, and dignity is inextricably linked to our ethics, then we need to do that thing I talk about all the time, addressing power and reflexively asking ourselves in this moment, in this interaction with this person, across all the points of oppression and power that are different between us, how do I construct a bridge to connect to this person? It's my job, Yeah. you know, as the community worker. Or, it's my job to move towards, to bridge the difference between us and how do I do that so that we can meet in an actual dialogue. I talk about my work as trying to be decolonizing. I'm trying to unsettle the settler that I am because I know yeah. I'm on indigenous territories. These were unceded territories, they were never surrendered. Um, and I need to figure out like how to do that for myself mm. and collectively for my family, my community, um, the people I work with uh, who are both indigenous and non-indigenous and people who are um, like me, a settler or people who are refugees have a different, own a different, there's a different accountability that's required in the protoc protocols of being on the territories. Yeah. So I think like that's how I started in terms of being decolonizing. I think it has to start there. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, um, an ethic of justice doing for me is that idea of, um, and this is from anarchist um, Richard Day's work about infinite responsibility and groundless solidarity. Mm -hmm. Always, we, we're never organized around one thing, even if we're talking about violence to not just talk about men's violence to women it, it's not just gender yeah. you know it, it there's also gender variant people disappeared in that right there's yeah. also heteronormativity that's extremely violent against queer people and trans people right so just always infinitely taking things apart and thinking you know it's groundless solidarity meaning thinking like okay but what about queer folks what about women of yeah. color what about trafficked women what about the global south what about unemployed men? Mm. You know, it's so like having, um, yeah, just you don't have one thing you're organizing around. 
And then again, what you're doing is trying to track vulnerability and ethics in that moment. Who is most vulnerable here? That's who we have to be accountable to.